We have still, dear colleagues, a uh, few minutes uh, for questions. They, we have uh, received quite a few of them, so I would uh, like uh, to you bear with me and uh, let uh, devote like 10 minutes, uh, uh, 12 minutes for uh, answering uh, some of the questions we have uh, we have been uh, asked uh, by our participants. So. I would like to start with the question that uh, actually arrived uh, uh, at the beginning, and the, the question actually, believe I believe, it's to all of our panelists, and it uh, it's about the possibilities for the EU governments and possibly the EU as well uh, could do in terms of uh, becoming a, a global AI leader in terms of uh, uh, being the early adopter, which means that the governments actually adopt the AI policies, utilize them so that they can ge generate the momentum for the development of the AI. So the question possibly could be an, uh, addressed to all of you, the, uh, the people who are responsible for the policies, but uh, always also the, those who know the better the, the grassroots activities. So who, who, would who would like to start? Deputy Minister? So, so that's a really important question. Uh, I think many things were mentioned here. Uh, I think uh, very important for this uh, cooperation and the special cooperation on the EU level, and I'm happy to, to hear from also from Mrs. Uh, uh, what what what's going on, and uh, <coughs> uh, we need to work uh, together because the other parts of the world actually uh, have also. Uh, AI as uh, as a key technology, uh, thanks to which they want to achieve achieve um, uh, competitive edge. Uh, and uh, what I would like to say that uh, it is also important uh, cooperate not only on the level of the EU but also with the third countries. But we need to take care of uh, uh, with whom we cooperate. That, that's uh, that's also why I have mentioned uh, the uh, GPAI, uh, General Partnership for Artificial Intelligence, where actually the countries that actually want to. Uh, uh, developed the uh, human-centric approach to AI, actually are <coughs> gathering together and working together. Uh, but um, many things uh, were mentioned, actually. I think uh, it's, uh, it's uh, clear that we really need to actually uh, um, have um, um, focused uh, and uh, increasing uh, investment into research. Uh, and um, uh, also to technology transfer and, uh, and deployment of the technologies. Uh, many things are happening. I'm personally uh, uh, very happy for the Digital Europe program as a complement, um, not only but also also to Horizon Europe program uh, because it's really um, focused on 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 deployment on the EU level. Uh, and um, uh, then another point is uh, is cooperation on education. And that talent attraction. This is this is it was mentioned many times. Uh, maybe uh, there are some actions that we could take uh, take together more efficiently, even uh, even even more um, uh, even more efficiently for, for the for the future. And um, uh, last but not least is the regulation. Actually, the regulation is uh, is in a way, but uh, we should take care about uh, the new AI regulation to not only uh, uh, protecting us uh, um, against the risks uh, that uh, that AI can bring, but also giving enough space for innovation. So this is this is really important task for all of us. Thank you very much. Uh, before I give the floor to uh, Ms. Levoye, possibly we can merge the question with another one that just arrived a minute ago, and this is uh, actually related to this one, uh, to the, the we are just discussing. And the question uh, uh, reads, AI products being more, uh, or AI enhanced products being more expensive, which means uh, uh, more demanding for use, what could be done to educate the consumers to, to, to actually utilize them, to prefer them? It, in my view, it relates a little bit to the question of the governments as uh, the earlier adopter. 
Well, there is a lot to do to raise awareness. That's something that uh, is very important. It's important to train uh, population to uh, for AI experts, but it's also important to train the population to be AI aware and, and to be able to understand the risks and the opportunities that are created by the technology. Um, and by raising awareness, it's also important, as I mentioned earlier, to uh, be able to uh, convey also young people to, um, to AI uh, training, AI diplomas. That, that's something that, that is very important important. But I will also come back on the first question because I think it was a quite an interesting question. I would have two more points to add uh, to what uh, Deputy Minister has said. I think that Europe has uh, a card to play on uh, edge AI uh, because this is a, an industrial uh, field where Today we have a microelectronics industry very well implanted uh, in Europe. Uh, we have strategic data uh, among uh, very different and competitive uh, industry uh, sectors. Uh, and um, we see a tendency to, the, to, age, uh, to age technologies with a very strong investment on, on developing chips. Uh, so that thing, I think that's uh, something where uh, Europe can keep up in the, in the race of uh, artificial intelligence. And the second point would be also on uh, natural language processing. I think this is also one of the, um, one of the areas uh, in which today we see that there are not so many uh, foreign uh, key players uh, present. We have a very uh, large diversity of European languages and dialects. And we have, as we have seen uh, in the presentation, and I was uh, very uh, interested to see the, the diversity of the um, Czech ecosystem on this, uh, on NLP. And we have also in France uh, some, some very interesting projects such as the the, the big science project that I, that, are, that I have mentioned, and with the emergence of uh, large uh, multilingual models, I think that Europe uh, definitely has uh, a role to play in this area with the European Commission, but also through bilateral cooperation. Thank you, Dr. Schivitz. I just want to react that I know about this big science project. I think it's a wonderful initiative, really. And I think uh, some of the Czech teams are also participating in this effort. It's been really uh, a wonderful, like Euro Europeans coming together with the infrastructure to make something uh, very nice and, 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 and big. So my, my response to the, uh, the previous questions uh, I sort of have two. One of them is that locally in Czech Republic, and this is also sort of observing a little bit from outside as, as coming here, is that uh, it seems that more really to, to make a difference, I think here more could be done on connecting. There is a lot of work from the grassroots uh, initiatives and from, uh, you know, connected more with the government investments and initiative with the strategy. I think it would be very nice if this workshop can help, you know, uh, start or, or or advance this discussion, I think that would be wonderful. And also it's great to see, uh, you know, France as one of the leaders in this area with the institutes and AI chairs. It's, it's, it's a great inspiration to uh, to see it here. So that's on the, um, on, on the local, on the Czech side. And on the EU level, uh, I think here, the, again, if we want to reverse this, this trend, which we saw on, on the research side, I think, again, a lot of the current European, on the EU level, the investments go into, in net, on a research, go into networking activities, which I think is uh, also specific for AI, which I think is great and is really helping bring the Europe together. But I think if you want to really make a difference, again, probably more would need to be done and, uh, than just uh, the, the networking activities. So that would be from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Ril. Um, thank you. I have not a lot of things to add, just um, come back to uh, the, the European strategy. I think that uh, we, we have a lot of capabilities, we have a lot of potential in Europe. Uh, maybe we, we, could, we, we should not make the mistake about um, considering all the topics on the same 
way. And when we speak, for example, about regulation, I think it's very important to regulate usage, to regulate um, econo economical things, what can be done, what can be sell or not, but to give freedom to researcher. Because you, you cannot be uh, on the top of what will come later if you stop things now. You, you never know what will happen. So this is very important. And the second one, I completely agree about the, the fact that people have to be educated, not only specialists, everybody. It's exactly the same that in other domain. It's not only AI, it's also computer science, uh, security, and so on. You, you, you earn a little bit of chemistry, physics, biology when you are small. Now you need to, leave, to learn a little bit of computer science and AI to be able to understand what you have in your hand. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I would have another question, possibly. I, uh, we have still a few minutes. Uh, that would uh, actually very uh, much uh, correspond to what has just been said by Professor Riel, and this is about the data, because the big data is critical for the development of the AI. And the question is that the read says follows. What can be done so that the data held, for example, by the public sector uh, could be shared and reused at the same time the, tr uh, the, the trust of the public uh, is ensured. What, what, what could be done at the national or possibly European level? So, Deputy Minister. So, yeah, I think uh, actually many things can be done, but I think very, very important is to have like a regulatory framework for that, uh, to have like same standards in the EU. And um, actually, I also think to uh, French presidency of the EU, actually, uh, we have a new file that uh, sh where the implementation start actually soon. It's a data governance act that speaks very much about uh, uh, us usage of, of the public public administration data and the open data. And so I think this is <coughs> this is promising step and and also now we have filed that actually hopefully will be will be shifted uh, forward of course uh, uh, by the Czech presidency that is data uh, that's called data act and then that is focusing on uh, rather on, uh, on uh, uh, giving access to uh, industrial data it's uh, there are some debates on how it should be tackled but uh, I think the goal is clear to uh, actually unlock the potential of data for innovative applications here in the EU Yes, yeah, so on, on gathering data, I'm also very much looking forward to the European strategy on, on that topic and, uh, and uh, the um, setting up of the European data spaces. I think that is something that will be very key for the development of, of AI at <clears throat> European level. That's something that we've been launching, uh, we've launched in 2019 um, within our national strategy. Uh, it's important to say that when we talk about data, it's not only, I mean, there are some concern uh, with regards personal data, but a lot of data is strategic data of businesses. Um, and we, we, we have given the opportunity to businesses uh, either um, from within a sec an economic sector or cross-sectorial to uh, launch platforms to be able to share data. Um, and I think it's very important to give the opportunity to, for these. Uh, this, is, this device was specially uh, industry-led, um, and it's very important to give the opportunity, the margins for businesses to be able to uh, set up the criteria in which they want to um, exchange, valorize, maybe uh, sell uh, their data. And uh, so that's something that needs to be uh, agreed at their level and built uh, with uh, these actors. Thank you, Dr. Chivitz. I just maybe comment, uh, so I'm not a legal expert to comment on this, but uh, just to make, we want to point out that I think there is a huge potential, really, like in health, you know, we, we could really, if we could learn or, you know, have like a person, patient-specific treatments, if we could apply uh, machine learning to health data. What I do want to mention is a concrete project I'm involved in. This is actually a national Czech AI uh, initiative, and this is more on the, uh, on building infrastructure, both hardware and software for 
uh, for, uh, f for science data. This is part of the European Open Science Cloud. And I think this is, a, this is very nice, where we will sit in, at this one table with people from different disciplines who are both data providers, but also including the, the machine learning capabilities to, to build such national infrastructure. I think it's very important because one of the major impact areas of AI will be in other areas like chemistry, biology, and physics. So. Uh, I think this is a great effort, uh, which uh, I'm sort of putting some energy to as well. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yu. Sorry. If I, if I understand well the question, it was also a question of trust from citizen. And I think this is the most important because we, we can do platform and trade and anything. If people don't believe in it and don't accept to give their data, you cannot not do anything. And I think there are, it's very difficult. We have to, people who are building this have to be very careful because at the very beginning, this will just be a question of reputation. It at some point, you have a failure. People will disengage immediately. And secondly, maybe we have to think about some, in another way. You know, security in computer science does not exist. You can never, never be sure. But for example, every, everyone has a smart card in his pocket. The smart card is not secure. It's a little bit secure, but not totally. But there are mechanisms to reimburse you, to, to repair the damage that can cause you. Maybe explain people that if some data is stolen, if their reputation is, government, people, institution will help them to recover, can instill some trust between people. Thank you very much. Uh well, dear colleagues, uh, we've been a little bit uh, behind the uh, schedule, uh, so I don't want to eat up too much uh, from the coffee break where deserved. Uh, uh, I apologize, therefore, do to those who have not uh, been, uh, uh, I've not been able to pass on their questions, uh, but we can surely come back to them later during the day. I would like really to thank our terrific uh, speakers uh, for um, uh, uh, explaining to us uh, the uh, objectives and the basic elements of the national strategies in France, in, the, in this country, as well on the European level, uh, uh, presenting uh, us as well, uh, I would say, excellent examples of uh, what, uh, what's going on in terms of uh, excellent research and impacts uh, uh, in terms of industry and, and uh, s s social services and I think uh, it, is, it has uh, really uh, been a very nice framework for the deliberations uh, uh, today and tomorrow. So thank you very much. I think uh, it has been a very, very interesting uh, debate at the, at the end and I would like to applaud to our, uh, to our speakers for very, very nice presentations.